G'day punters, time to come down the lock up with the Plump Daddy J. G'day punters, well welcome to down the lock up with the Plump Daddy J. Now, when I mean the lock up, I don't mean prison, I mean the lock up, the place where you lock up your cars and your tools and you get down to and you do it at work. And a bit of spannering. This is the first episode in what I intend to be an ongoing series that's going to uh, go over and discover a bit about what I do down my lockup when I work on my beloved Ford Escorts. So let's take it away. Hi, I'm the Plump Daddy J, and I'm located in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I've had various careers in my life. I've been a mechanic, I've been an office boy, I've run my own workshop, I've even been a um, semi-professional musician in my time, and I still dabble with all of these particular interests. One of the most interesting periods in my life was when I ran a little magazine called Type 49 Racing. Uh, why Type 49 Racing? What did the title mean? It was in reference to the Type 49 Escort and it was a magazine that was motoring based and it was about the Ford Escort in its rear wheel drive configurations which was the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 which was very popular throughout Europe but also here in Australia and in New Zealand as well. So why the Escort? Well I used to love trail riding and off-road motorcycling and I kind of fell into rallying and racing and I liked the Escort, it was the big little car. My sister owned one which I kind of inherited in a whole succession of over 25 Escorts and when I mean Escorts I'm not talking about the female ones with long legs and blonde hair to charge money, I'm talking about the little cars. Well when I'm talking about Escorts I uh, had about 25 of them over the year and I currently now have my old Pinto powered race car and my red Aussie spec Mark II RS2000. The old race car is known as the dog box and it's down my lock up and I spend my free time at the lock up working on that car and building performance 2 litre Pinto engines to suit escorts. Now while the escort came with the Kent series push rod overhead valve engine as the norm, I always liked the Pinto, the 2 litre overhead cam engine that uh, was released in the RS2000s. Uh, the exotic engines such as the Lotus Twin Cam and the Cosworth BDA were outside my price range and really unless it was a very serious BDA, you know big valves over 2 litre, it would not outpower a Pinto anyway. So for cost and reliability and availability and general bang for your buck, the Pinto is my engine of choice when it comes to building something to put into an Escort. Now the Pinto was designed by Ford Germany and was used in a range of pretty pedestrian rep cars and shopping trolleys at first, but in 1975 Ford shoehorned the Pinto into the Escort to invent the Mark 1 RS2000 and on such humble beginnings the world turned. Um, a standard trim Pinto will put out around about 100 horsepower from its 2 litre single overhead cam design but when properly modified a Pinto base around the standard engine block and head can produce just on 200 horsepower. Now there are some crazy Scandinavian dudes in rowing over there that get up to 230, 240 horsepower from 2 litre engines but these engines are very heavily modified particularly around the cylinder head and are very much away from the original design and port layout and really are one off special engines that require special bespoke exhaust systems and special modified intake manifolds and fueling setups to get them to work. They are very specialised and require huge amounts of money and labour and machining to develop these engines uh, and really outside the scope of what normal people do. But as I said, they really are crazy Scandinavian dudes and if you ever watched Finnish club rolling, you'll know exactly what I mean. But by modifying a standard layer, Pinto on big valves, etc, you will be able to get up to 200 horsepower uh, and with an engine like that. And you can build an engine like that for around about 8k or less if you know what you're doing. And fit it into an Escort, it can make for a pretty rapid little motor car. 
Now in the day I used to race and uh, I was racing obviously a 2 litre powered Escort and from necessity I learned how to build my own engines. Um, now most of the time these engines would have to be lifed in particular in regard of the connecting rod and the connecting rod bolt here of the engines. It's the real weak link of the Pinto is the standard rod and the standard con rod bolt. Now in people or in engines built by people that have pretty free access to money they obviously went for modified steel cranks and modified steel rods from bespoke suppliers such as Farndon and Cosworth for some over in the UK for example and they could make very reliable engines but they were also very expensive and you could end up spending the better part of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to build a, a very rock solid Pinto engine that would be totally reliable um, and it would be on all steel bottom end which is steel crank steel connecting rods and also forge pistons uh, which is a very expensive way to make an engine reliable now it's a bit of a uh, problem in some sense because the standard escort crank is a very strong piece of work and it can handle quite a lot of horsepower before it'll break there's some evidence in America from an engine tuner called David Vizard who was English by birth and had been working on the Pinto since about the mid 70s uh, that the standard crank could take up to 500 horsepower and this is just a cast iron crank up to 500 horsepower for short periods of time in turbo applications so in a naturally aspirated engine which is being fed by just carburetors the standard crank is a pretty good thing and doesn't really require changing so it brings us back to the problem being the connecting rod now you can buy connecting rods in steel as I said from people like Cosworth or Farndon but they are pretty expensive and be running out to the better part of oh, in the, in the day you know three to four thousand dollars a set which still led to a pretty expensive engine and of course then people would be using forged pistons as a result as I said 15 to 20k to build a, a rock solid engine as prepared by somebody like Frank Lowndes for example for Group C racing back in the day of the mid to late 70s in Australia now as I said I've been building Pintos for around about 20 years and always known about the problem with the standard connecting rod and we used to get around it by just changing them regularly which was getting harder and harder because rods were getting harder and harder to find because you needed a donor engine every time you did it but you had to do it because if you had a engine failure in the rod area it would result in a very spectacular explosion that would normally wipe out the entire engine up to and including the cylinder head it would certainly in most cases devastate the block because when it snapped a rod it would throw what was left of the rod out of bed as such and tear the block to pieces um, so a real problem with these modified escorts was the connecting rod now back in around about 2004 to 2005 they came on the market through a company called Spool who were Chinese a steel connecting rod that had been designed not strictly for the Pinto but for a YB Cosworth engine which is based on the Pinto block another Ford derived engine based on the old Pinto block now this rod is suitable for use in a Pinto but you have to change the piston configuration now I can explain this in more detail and I will as we go later into episodes of down the lockup with plump daddy J but uh, basically speaking for about the last 10 to 15 years I've been specializing in building 
a pinto based two litre using a steel Chinese rod and a modified piston configuration which has proved to be very reliable and allows you to build a strong engine that will not break for a set as little as eight to nine thousand dollars if you're not if you know what you're doing and that's including modifying the cylinder head and getting big valves done and fitted in camshafts where most of the money goes in these engines anyway so that's going to be the basics of uh, the ensuing episodes of Down the Lock Up with Plump Daddy J as we'll go through a process of can assembling one of these bottom ends to suit a 2 litre Pinto and it will uh, be based on one of these steel rotted configurations that I've developed for about the last 10 to 15 years.